Okay, so this is question seven from the June 2014 BY1 paper. Uh, this question's all to do with immobilized enzymes, and the examiner is using the example of immobilized pectinases enzymes. Okay, so um, basically pectinases can digest this uh, polysaccharide called pectin. Okay, so the examiner tells you what this pectin does. It sort of uh, binds cells together. Okay, um, so it's used on uh, industrial production of fruit juices, these pectinases. Okay, now the interesting thing in this question is the examiner says the enzyme is mo immobilized onto the surface of a gel membrane. Okay, so <clears throat> there are various ways of immobilizing enzymes. If I just draw a circle here, if that represents uh, uh, a gel bead, some enzymes can be immobilized within the gel bead. Okay, so they're sort of trapped within it. Um, gel membranes then, if I draw a membrane there, you can see that enzymes probably can be covalently attached to the surface of this uh, gel membrane. Sometimes uh, this method here, uh, method number two, uh, sometimes we can use sort of cellulose fibers for that. So this is quite important because the, the type of immobilization does affect how the enzyme works. Okay, so this, this is important you understand. This is on the surface of a gel membrane. Okay, the uh, immobilized enzymes then are added to a column, which is there. You've got the gel um, membrane immobilized with pectinase. You've got apple pulp going in, and then down the bottom, you've got the juice coming out. Okay, so as the apple pulp goes through this immobilized region, um, the pectinases will start to digest the pectin. And that sort of allows the cells to sort of uh, break apart and detach from each other. So part A then, um, it's telling you that immobilized enzymes can increase the temperature range over which they can be used. So that's one advantage of immobilized enzymes. You're then asked to describe two other advantages of using the pectinases. So, standard answer here, um, the product is not contaminated with the enzyme because it remains within the column. The enzymes can be reused, okay, and the enzymes can tolerate a much wider range of pH. And lastly, that these enzymes can be used in a continuous process. So what that means is you add apple at the top, and it comes out the bottom and you keep on doing that. Continuously add apple pulp and you continue, continuously make the product. So I've just uh, written in two, two of the examples I've mentioned there. Okay. Part B then suggests why reducing the flow rate of material through the column would result in an increased volume of juice being collected. So if I just go to a, a clean sheet here, um, if you've got the column there, okay, um, the flow rate um, means how fast the apple juice will run through the column. Okay, so if the flow rate is actually uh, slow, then the apple juice or the apple pulp will run through the column much more slowly. So in that column, Okay, you are going to have the immobilized um, enzyme or the pectinase. I'll just draw the immobilized enzymes as circles here for clarity. Okay, now what happens is if you've got a slow flow rate, as the apple pulp comes through the immobilized region, as it moves really slowly through this region, the apple is going to be in contact with the immobilized enzymes for much longer. Okay, so they're going to be interacting with the enzymes for a lot longer. Okay, now in terms of enzyme activity, this will clearly allow 
far more enzyme substrate complexes to form. Okay, it's those enzyme substrate complexes that are needed to produce the product. Okay, so the slower that upper pulp moves, the more chances and the, the greater number of enzyme substrate complexes will take place. There you go. So I've written that answer in for part B. Part C now. Um, the extraction of juice were using pectinase was compared with equal volumes and concentrations of free enzyme. Enzyme bound to the surface of a gel and then enzyme immobilized inside alginate beads. OK, so that goes back to the drawing I made earlier up here number one there is the alginate bead example okay so the results are shown in the graph below so if we look at the y-axis here um, the scale is volume of juice extracted in centimeters cubed okay so it's a volume um, scale the x-axis is temperature in degree C so the free enzyme is the solid line uh, with an open circle okay so you can see the rate goes up to a peak or the volume sorry goes up to a peak at about 40 and then the rate or the volume sorry decreases down at 60 degrees um, the enzyme, enzyme bound to the gel is the one with the triangles. Okay, so that goes up. It actually goes up to a higher volume. And the temperature is higher, you see. So this clearly shows that immobilized enzymes are more tolerant to higher temperatures. And then the rate, sorry, the volume, sorry, goes down at 70 degrees. Um, the... Immobilized enzyme in beads is the open square. Again, that shows that line shows it's more tolerant to temperatures, but you can see that there's not so much volume made at 60 degrees between the two immobilized enzymes. So there's clearly something going on there. Uh, the other thing you should note as well, of course, is um, the gradient of the line. Okay. The uh, the gradients, I think, are a bit steeper for the uh, enzyme bound to the gel surface. Okay. Um, right, so that's just basically looking at the data there and what's going on. So the first question then is use the graph and your own knowledge of enzymes. Answer the following questions. Describe and explain the results of the free enzyme at temperatures above 40 degrees C. Okay, so let's have a look at this graph then. Um, the solid line is what we're interested in. So 40 degrees, we want to look at what happens after that temperature. So we're looking now between I think we should look at between 40 and 60 first okay uh, we can certainly uh, explain what's happening there and then um, between 60 and 70 we could possibly mention something about that as well right so the first thing to mention really is between 40 and 60 degrees C the volume of liquid extracted is actually decreasing. Okay, now that's a description. Okay, uh, volume of juice extracted is decreasing. Um, moving on from that, you can say that after 60 degrees, so between 60 and 70 actually, there is no volume of juice extracted. It's actually zero. Okay, so both of those are a description of the graph. We need to then add an explanation onto this. So you can see that um, at temperatures above 40, the enzyme must be progressively getting more and more denatured. 
okay because uh, the volume gradually decreases as the temperature increases so that must mean as the temperature increases higher and higher you get more and more denaturing of the enzyme now you must always explain what denaturing means okay so you can mention about the hydrogen bonds being broken and ultimately that's going to alter the shape of the tertiary structure of the enzyme and that as a consequence of that then you have um, a change in the shape of the active site the active site will be no longer complementary to the substrate okay so that's a description and an explanation of what's happening uh, above 40 degrees for the free enzyme okay so i've typed the uh, the answer in there uh, the first part here uh, that i bracketed in blue that is the description of what's happening on the graph and then the final part down here is uh, an explanation behind the description that you've uh, stated okay part two explain why a higher yield of juice was obtained when using a free enzyme between temperatures 20 and 40 degrees than when using immobilized enzymes okay this is really looking again at um, how many enzyme substrate complexes uh, can be formed uh, in order for those to form you have to have movement uh, of the enzyme and the substrate to actually collide and form an enzyme substrate complex so the answer there is that the free enzyme can move and you get an increased chance of uh, enzyme substrate complexes being formed right so part uh, three now suggest a reason for the difference seen in the results for the enzymes bound to the gel membrane surface with those immobilized inside the beads between uh, 20 and 60 degrees C so if you have a look at those uh, so we're looking at the triangles and the squares so there's clearly a difference now the the enzyme bound to the surface is the triangle that certainly seems to be having or producing more juice for every temperature okay the the triangles are higher than the square so that is showing that more juice is being extracted with the enzymes bound to the surface of the uh, gel rather than those inside a, a bead um, so the um, most obvious answer to that really is the accessibility of the enzyme to the substrate so if you are immobilized on the cell or gel surface um, you can actually have more enzyme substrate complexes forming okay because the active site is a, a bit more accessible than it would be if it was trapped within a gel so that's the uh, answer there to the final question here um, so the enzymes bound to the membrane surface are more accessible to the uh, substrate and uh, for the beads then the substrate will have to enter the bead by diffusion to form an enzyme substrate complex and that obviously adds uh, a bit of time um, to the to the reaction so it takes a lot longer for the juice uh, to be formed